Hi, this is Jason with Yale Dell Scientific, and today we're showcasing the download, setup, and use of the customized Excel inventory management system. To download the system, you'll be presented with the screen after you click the appropriate link. As you see here, if you click the link for the zip file, it will automatically go to your downloads folder. So I'll do that right now just as an example. You can see that it's downloading in the lower left hand corner. I'll go to my downloads folder and you should have a zip file named customized Excel inventory system 621. You can extract that by right click, extract all, and that will give you the Excel inventory system subfolder. If you go inside this folder, these are the files that make up the actual system. To get started, simply double click on inventory management system dot XLS. If this is the very first time that you're running one of our softwares, you may encounter a protected view. This is fine because you've downloaded it from the internet. Simply click on enable editing. At this point, click on click here to return to main menu and you'll be presented with the main menu. One of the very first things that you might want to do is to set your corporate logo for the software. Simply click on the click here to set your corporate logo link. This will present you with an ability to browse your local machine for an appropriate image that represents your brand. To get started in using the software, there's three icons on the main menu. The scan transaction allows you to basically scan items out as if it was a point of sale. Each scan is associated with a timestamp and a transaction code, and the prices are automatically tallied as you scan the items. The bulk upload of new products allows you to have a separate Excel file with product information preloaded that you can import into the system just as an easy way to add products to the backend database. The view or edit inventory screen allows you to do just that. It allows you to view all of the edit, view all of the inventory in the system and adjust the stock totals. So if we want to get started with scanning a transaction, simply click on scan transaction. And at this point from this interface, what we would basically do is grab our barcode scanner gun and grab one of our products and scan it in to this yellow text entry field. In this example, I've scanned the barcode. It just so happens that the barcode for example purposes has the text sample barcode one. The system will automatically find that product information in the backend database and then display a pop-up with all of the product's information. At this point, you can edit any associated fees or change the price that you want to cha charge the customer from this interface. So for example, we see that the suggested retail price is $40, but we're actually charging the customer only $4.32. But we can adjust that at the time of sale. Let's say that I wanna charge the customer $10. And let's say that this particular sale of this item has an associated postage fee of $2.50. I can then click on save, and that particular transaction is added to the system. I can then scan my next item. Now let's assume that we scan an item that doesn't yet exist within the system. So I'll type in something. You can always type or scan the barcode number. Either one will do. Let's say that that's a barcode that I scanned that I know doesn't exist within the system. When the system tries to find it, it alerts you that it doesn't exist within the database. You click OK, and this is where you can add that product's information for the very first time to the system. Let's say that the manufacturer is a company called Acme. The product name is Widget1. The MSRP is $99.99, but we will typically sell it for $49.99. And it normally has an associated postage fee based on the weight or the size of about $5.
This is just for our internal tracking purposes. And we currently want to set our beginning stock total at 50 units. So we'll click save. And it lets us know that that item has been added to the backend Excel database. It just happens to be Excel row 455. And it's also added to the interface, added to the sale at the time. So we can see that we have two items that we've scanned. They total $59.99 because one was $10 and one was $49.99. And you can see here the total is two items. Now at this point, let's assume that we're done. We can save this transaction to the system and it will automatically generate a record for us. We'll click on Save Transaction. This is just a prompt to make sure that we want to do this. We'll select yes. And it lets you know that the transaction report has been saved and it will display it to you on the actual spreadsheet itself. So we see we're now in the sales data worksheet and we can see the last two entries were automatically added by the system. That was the barcode one, that was the manufacturer. We can see all the details were added. We can see what our net profit was based on the MSRP and the actual price subtracting any fees. The transaction date is automatically recorded as well as some individual metrics for the month, the day, and the year. Now that can come into detail later when you want to do some advanced searches and some advanced filtering on your own by day, by week, by month, by year. We tried to keep all of this granular so you would be able to do that. And we can see that the associated transaction or order number is automatically applied to these two line items. Now, another thing that's also interesting on in what the system was due is that it's automatically going to keep track of the inventory stock. So if we go to the product list worksheet tab, we can find those particular items. So we can see that those two items that we recently built were sample barcode one and sample barcode 777. So let's just sort by sample barcode one. Let's just put this in alphabetical order. And now let's go to sample barcode one. We can see here the top. Here it is. Now, if we scroll all the way over, you can see where it keeps track of the inventory totals. Sample barcode one, the current stock total is now five. So from within this product list, we can scroll down to the appropriate barcode ID, which happens to be sample barcode 777. That was one of the items that we recently sold. Now, if we scroll over to column M, we can see that the stock total is now 49. It started off at 50, but we recently sold one as part of transaction 1000 that you see here. So when you look at the product list, the inventory is automatically um, subtracted one. So now we're down to 49. Now, another way that you can view the inventory is by going back to the main menu, you can always go back to the main menu by simply pressing Control, Shift, and A, and then simply going on to View, Edit, Inventory. View, Edit, Inventory, you can see a listing of all the barcodes and all the products. Let's go to one that we want to check out, sample barcode 777. If we click that item, you can see that it automatically selects it within the sheet, but more importantly, it highlights the information on screen. So we can see that this is the manufacturer, that's the product name, and that's our current stock total. Now, if at any time we wanted to adjust these totals, we could always just click here on the plus or the minus. Let's say I want to add one to the stock. It says, how many units do you want to add? Let's say I want to add five units, actually. So we should now end up with 54 in the warehouse. So now I go back down to that particular item, the 777. And we can see now that we have 54 items in stock.